Hey guys, thanks to all your support, this channel, Regional Food Japan, now has 500 subscribers. So it's going to be a special episode today. To commemorate 500 subscribers, I'm going to show you five different easy and delicious recipes using scallops. Now you might be wondering why scallop? The reason being, in Japan, scallop is considered as one of the luckiest foods as it's a symbol of future prosperity. So by doing this scallop episode, I'd like to wish you all and this channel future success. So let's get started. The first dish I'm going to show you is hotate bata, which is scallop and bara. This is a typical scallop dish from Hokkaido. I'd say this is perfect for barbecuing as it's easy to make and the result is promising. Now place a scallop shell on the barbecue grill and put a scallop, some boiled asparagus and some corn. Secondly, pour in one and a half teaspoons of soy sauce and one teaspoon of mirin, then start heating the shell. When the sauce comes to a boil and the bottom side of the scallop is cooked, just flip it over and put half a nobo butter. When the scallop is cooked all the way through, it's ready. How simple is that? Instead of a shell, a Spanish cassuela or small skillet work perfectly as well. The second dish is called misokayaki, which is a local scallop dish from Aomori Prefecture. Now, this one is seasoned with miso. So the combination of scallop, dashi, miso and egg is heavenly. This one is also perfect for barbecuing, so let's get started. First off, we're gonna make iriko dashi, the Japanese dried sardine stock, into 500 ml of water, add 20 grams of Japanese dried sardines, which I've taken the heads and guts off already. Now start heating, and when it comes to a boil, remove the scum. Now from this point, Simmer the stock for 10 minutes on a medium-low heat. If you can't find Japanese dried sardines, you can alternatively use Japanese dashi powder or even water. Now 10 minutes have passed, strain the liquid and your dashi is ready. But we need at least this much liquid to make a good dashi, but we're gonna need just a bit for the dish, so the rest of it you can turn into miso soup. Now for this dish, cut the scallops into quarter pieces now, depending on the size of the scallops you have, you probably need two to three scallops per serving. Buy a slice of spring onions, place a scallop shell, small skillet, or Spanish cassuela on a grill, and pour three tablespoons of the dashi. Then start heating. When the liquid is hot enough, add the scallops that you cut earlier, and the spring onion as well. Add a teaspoon of your favorite miso, preferably tsugaru miso, which is Aomori's local miso. When the liquid comes to a simmer, dissolve the miso into it. Now this is the final step. Just carefully and slowly pour in the beaten egg the point is, you don't rush here, otherwise all the liquid will overflow. You don't need to use up the egg if it seems too much, the rest can go to the next batch. Wait until the egg sets, and your misokayaki is ready to be served. Now the third one is called hotate fry, which is deep fried scallops. Scallops are breaded with Japanese panko breadcrumbs and deep fried and sided with Japanese sauce tartar. I mean, who would hate this? We're gonna start off by making the sauce tartar. Finally, dice some onion. Soak this in cold water for about 10 minutes to take out the hotness. In the meantime, finally chop some gherkins. 
and cut a hard boiled egg in the same way. Now into a mixing bowl, put the finely chopped onion, gherkin and the egg. Then add a couple of tablespoons of Japanese mayonnaise. Add a dash of white wine vinegar. And some ground pepper. Mix them all together and that's it. It's a homemade Japanese tartar sauce. Now we're gonna coat the scallops with the breading. Firstly, dust them with some flour. Now dip them into the beaten egg. And finally cover them in panko breadcrumbs. Now the difference between panko and the normal breadcrumbs is that, as you can see, panko is a lot coarser. So when they are fried, it creates an awesome crunchy texture. Now let's start frying. Now the scallops I have are fresh enough to be eaten raw, so I'd like them to be rare inside. At 180 degrees Celsius, fry them for about a minute and a half. Take them out and rest them for about a minute. Now let's cut one in half and check the doneness inside. As you can see, it's perfectly rare inside. Now let's do some sashimi. The fourth one is hotate don, which is Hokkaido style scallop sashimi rice bowl. Now this is the art of Japanese food. Um, maximize flavor with simple preparation. You can feel the pureness and the freshness and the umaminess of scallops. Let's go. It's real simple than ever. Here I have five large scallops. Just slice each scallop into three slices. Cut a chisel leaf in half. Sprinkle some shredded nori over room temperature rice. It's extremely important that the rice is not piping hot, otherwise the sashimi will start to cook on it. Now beautifully lay out the scallop slices like you portray a flower. Now once you're done, put half a shisa leaf in the center and top it with some fish roe, such as salmon roe, flying fish roe or caviar. To finish off, spoon over some soy sauce mixed with wasabi. Now here's your gorgeous and delicious hotate dong. Finally, this one's gonna be everyone's favorite, I'm very sure. Scallop curry from Hokkaido. Imagine the combination of delicious Japanese curry and scallop. No other words to say. Let's get started. Now score the top and bottom surfaces of scallops. The reason why we do this is that this way the curry flavor goes into the meat more easily. That being said, this is totally optional. If you're not confident about your knife skill, you can skip this. I'm using nine scallops, but you can put as many as you like, of course. Thinly slice one and a half onions. Then 10 champignons as well. Once you've done that, melt three knobs of butter in the frying pan. Then sear the scallops on a medium heat. Then sprinkle a bit of ground black pepper. Cook each side for 30 seconds and take them out. Now I'd like to boost the seafood flavor, so I'm gonna add 300 grams of frozen seafood mix. As you can see a lot of water comes out because they are frozen. But this is actually a very nice seafood juice and I'd like to use this as the base for the curry. So what we're going to do now is to put the scallops back into the pan and get some very nice flavor from them as well. Add 2 tablespoons of cooking sake and simmer for a minute. Now take them out again to avoid overcooking 
and transfer the base stock into a mixing bowl and set it aside as well. Now clean the pan and heat it again, put some oil and the vegetables. And saute them on a medium heat until they are slightly caramelized. So when the vegetables look like that, put the seafood back in. Also pour in the base stock. I had about 250 ml of the base stock and to that I'm going to add 600 ml of water. Add about a tablespoon of oyster sauce. This is a really good umami booster for the seafood curry. Now I need a bit of sweetness and sourness. Put a teaspoonful of fruit chutney. Now at this point remove the scum. Throw in your favorite brand of Japanese curry cubes. Give it a good stir to dissolve the cubes completely. Then simmer for about 20 minutes on a low heat. Now after 20 minutes, put the scallops back in. Putting a bit of grated ginger at the end gives very nice freshness to the curry. Now a delicious Hokkaido style scallop curry sauce is done. Let's plate it up. Right, that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this special episode and if you did, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions about Japanese food or my recipes, please put your comments in the comment section. Also, don't forget to visit my official website to find out more Japanese recipes. I'll see you next time. Bye! Find a list of all the ingredients in the description box below.